In the morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, how are you today? Welcome to the Sunday edition of the St. Mark Bemidji Podcast, a podcast that features the Sunday sermon from ours or another Wells Lutheran Church. Today's podcast was brought to you by Viking Pizza Axes. Our axes are hand-forged and crafted with a tradition that stretches as far back as Leif Erikson. You'll have your pizza cut in no time with one of our razor-sharp cutting tools. Viking Pizza Axes. Because eating pizza all by itself isn't bad enough for your health. It is our sincere hope today here at the podcast office that these devotions will encourage you to stay in the Word, to come out to the divine services, and to fellowship and receive and give encouragement to your fellow believers in Christ. They're also a great tool to share with your friends, acquaintances, and strangers that may not have heard the good news of Jesus. Feel free to give this stuff away. That's why we do it. Our meditation for today is titled, Listen. It's based on a reading from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1-10. through 10. If you don't have your Bible handy, I'd recommend that you pause the podcast for a moment and go grab it so you can follow along and reference it during the sermon. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up, went to Eli, and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. May God bless our time in the Word together today. The Word of God that is the basis of the sermon this morning is from 1 Samuel chapter 3, those first ten verses that I read in the first lesson. And having read those words, it made me think of an old pastor who's been retired for some years. He hasn't been sainted yet. Not in heaven. But it made me think of him and how he used to begin every single class, every single sermon, adult instruction, all of those things. Even letters that he would write. And in his old age, uh, though he struggles with technology, he still puts out the occasional Facebook post. And he begins them all the same way. With one word, listen. Listen. And then he would quote a Bible passage and share his thoughts and meditations on that particular verse and how it applied to the people under his care. Listen. Listen, he would say. And at first I found it interesting, having heard him preach a a couple of times and heard others, uh, he wasn't my pastor growing up, Uh, but having heard others say how often he would do this, and knowing him later on, having heard him preach and teach this way, I kind of would chuckle inside and say, well, if he would begin a sermon or something in a different way, that might actually be more attention-getting to switch it up every once in a while. But the word listen, he apparently had put a lot of thought into this. Because he never said the word angrily or out of frustration like you know you're trying to correct a toddler listen no he never said it lazily or with complacency listen 
He said it the exact same way every single time. Listen. The way that, you know, if you're camping in the, uh, in the middle of the night or the like, and you're sitting there and you're lying awake in your tent or in your camper, and you hear wolves or coyotes yipping in the distance, and you shake the person next to you, listen. Or if you're standing on your back porch on a hot summer night and you hear music going on in town, you might call somebody out and say, hey, listen. That's the way that he said it. And when you think about it, it's an appropriate way to begin anything when you're about to proclaim the Word and the works of God. Listen. Just like Eli instructed Samuel in the dark of that night in the house of the Lord. Imagine that confused little boy sitting there in the house of the Lord by the ark, not really understanding what was going on. Who's speaking to me? What is this? He probably was a little scared. Samuel said, go back and listen. And when you hear him calling, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. I always find it interesting how this part of the word uh, begins. The beginning portion of chapter 3. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. I think we can kind of draw a parallel. Doesn't it often seem to us like the word of the Lord is rare? We watch the things that are going on in our time and in our day. We watch the troubles of the world. The things that are happening in the Middle East. The things that are happening in Asia. The things that are happening in our own country. It's like, what in the world is going on? Even in Christian homes. Christian spouses, Christian parents, there's strife, there's discord. And life presents its problems, life presents its trials, and we think, man, I just wish God would speak. I wish He would tell me what to do. The Word of God often seems so quiet, so subdued. And it's appropriate to ask, why was it rare then? Why does it seem rare now? Why do we feel as though God is distant from us or quiet? Well, it's not because God isn't speaking. It's because we're not listening. We have a sinful nature that fights against us. It doesn't want to listen. You hear some of those sad but relatable stories of spouses who have just learned to tune the other one out. A wife will call her husband and give him something to do and five minutes later she'll come back in and, hey, did you bring that up? And what? No, oh, you said something? Yeah, it's kind of how we are when it comes down to God's Word. We zone out. We get preoccupied. We get overly concerned with only that which pertains to me immediately. My time, my salary, my desires. You hear that country song, I only talk to God when I need a favor? I can't stand that song. That's not because I'm trying to be pious and holy. I just don't like the tune. <laughs> but... I, I don't like the idea of that. We do plenty of talking to God. That's the sinful nature. We do plenty of complaining and talking to God. This is what I need. This is what I want. This is what I have to do. This is my desire. We make plenty of demands of God and what really God should do is give us the silent treatment. Why should He listen to self centered people like we so often are. We dare to speak to Him sometimes as though we're on the same kind of footing or that we've got the same authority or that we're number one? No. Yeah, we should have the silent treatment. But He didn't give Eli and Samuel the silent treatment. He didn't give Israel the silent treatment back then. It wasn't so different back in those days. Eli had a couple of sons, and those guys were priests in the temple. And let me put it this way, they were not good priests. 
these guys who should have been the spiritual caretakers of Israel, the one to, ones to comfort God's people, they were more concerned with lining their own pocketbooks. They were more concerned with their own stomachs. They were own con- more concerned with, with their own sexual desires. They often slept with the women who, who helped and attended um, the, 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 the temple. They ran the name of God through the mud. They ran the office of priest through the mud and back again. But God still didn't give them the silent treatment. He continued to speak to them. The Lord continued to come to them. He continued to speak. He continued to send them good priests. He continued to send them good prophets like Samuel. And not just one every once in a while, but many that they might be able to listen to His Word. And most importantly, hear of the promise of the One who would take their sins, take their selfishness upon His shoulders. All those priests were responsible for offering those sacrifices, those unblemished lambs. They were supposed to be those reminders. This is who Messiah will be. This is who the one sacrifice will be. There's one coming who will be a perfect listener. Who will do exactly as His Father in Heaven asks of Him. And He will be killed. He will go from manger to cross on your behalf. The one sacrifice to end all sacrifices. And it's about Him I can't help but think of when I read uh, this story of Samuel sitting in the temple. This, this boy, we're not really sure how old he is here. But I can't help but picture another little boy, our Savior Jesus, when He was in the temple, probably around the same age. And how He was listening and watching the priests his mom and dad had gone up there for the, fa- uh, the, the, the Passover festival. And maybe you remember the story. Mary and Joseph leave. They take off. Oh, Jesus is probably just playing with the other kids. But what did Jesus just listen to? He just watched as uh, at this Passover festival. He had just watched as the, the priest went up front and he saw that unblemished lamb go up there and the priest hold it up and <laughs> cut its throat blood spill all over the place. He heard the priest read from the Word about how the offspring of Abraham would be the, the, the blessing to many nations. He had heard and listened to all these things. He had done so attentively and he was listening and understanding that he was that lamb. Imagine that boy, Jesus, listening to his Father's Word in the temple. Is it any wonder why he looks at Mary and says, I have to be about my father's business? What did I just hear? It's true whether it's him or all God's people, regardless of our age or race or gender. When God speaks, God's servants are called to listen. And we know and believe that that it's His Word It's His Word that called everything into being at the beginning of time, right? We have the same Word in front of us today. The same Word that has faithfully delivered promise after promise after promise to His people. And still today we might be tempted to think of uh, the world being a silent void and wanting God to speak or that the Word of the Lord is rare, but if you really think about it, God in His grace continues to speak and continues to speak in abundance in more ways than ever before. He has not given us the silent treatment that we deserve. Not by a long shot. He hasn't taken His Word from our church. He hasn't taken His Word from our homes or made it rare. Just the opposite. God is infinitely more patient with us and with our selective hearing and our deafness. He speaks to us in more places and ways than ever before. Think of it. Have you ever felt the burden of your sin in church? Have you ever been sitting here and and, and felt it pressing down on you? And not heard a word of comfort from the pulpit? 
or in the words of absolution, that your sins are forgiven. Have you ever brought your sins forward here at the, at the Lord's table and been consumed by them? How could I be forgiven for this or for that or for what I said or for what I did and not heard your, your, Savior, your Savior's words standing here, take and eat, take and drink. This is My body. This is My blood given and shed for you. Listen. Depart in peace. Yeah, that's rare. In a good way. You don't hear that out in the world. But nowadays we have so many ways of accessing this. We have services every single Sunday. Even if you're sick and even if you're at home, you can still pull up your phone or your tablet or your computer or whatever. You can still watch church. There's a Christian friend or a Christian pastor who's a phone call away. Even if you feel as though the, the, the Word of the Lord is rare in your life and you feel overwhelmed, you have access to Christian friends, you have access to Christian pastors to tell you, yeah, there's suffering. Yeah, there's darkness. Yeah, there's silence in this world. But what is our purpose? What are God's servants called to be? When we listen to the Word, what do we find? We find Jesus, right? And His life was not by any means easy. There was suffering. There was darkness. If you looked at the life of Jesus, you might think to yourself, man, it must have been quiet or seemed to, to, to Him as though God wasn't speaking. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Jesus listened perfectly. And yes, there was suffering and darkness in His life, but where did it end? It ended in glory. And we're called to the same thing. We're called to the same purpose. To be conformed to the image of God's Son as His servants. When the Lord speaks, and there's many ways to hear Him, Sunday school, Bible class, church, your own home devotions. Listen when the Lord speaks. And we're in the season of Epiphany and the, the common figure that comes up in the season of Epiphany is always the wise men. You know, well, What made those wise men wise? Where were they from? Well, we're not really sure, but my guess would be Babylon. Think of how the Word of the Lord was rare over there. It had been hundreds and hundreds of years since there were any Jewish people living there. They didn't have a temple over there. Now, what made those wise men wise? Well, we're not even really sure what part of the Bible they were looking at. There's a couple different passages in Scripture that point to a star. We're not entirely sure which one they were honing in on. We don't know if the Lord spoke to them miraculously as He did to Samuel on the dark night of that, in the temple. Maybe He did. But what we do know is that whatever it was, they listened. They listened and they went. And what was the result? Everything is what they had found. Everything was just as it had been told them. They listened. They listened and they went and they found the Christ child with His mother. At the end of their long journey under that star was the King of Israel, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. When God spoke, they listened. And the same is true of God's people of all time. How do we carry out our various callings in a God-pleasing way? As a husband or a wife or a spouse uh, or spouses or, or kids, within Christian families or employers or employees. Well, a, a Christian husband listens to the Word of God and how are we to live out that vocation? With an iron fist? No. A Christian husband listens to the Word of God and loves his wife as Christ loved the church. A Christian wife listens to the Word of God and loves her husband as the church loves Christ. As Christian homes train children in many different things, 
how to behave and how to do this, how to do that, and various different interests. The most important thing that we share with them is teaching them to listen, not just to mom and dad or teachers, but listen to the Word. Listen to the Word of God and train them in the way that they should go. We all listen. And we all see how each of us, in our own way, despite our, yes, we're sinful creatures, but each of us in our own way are like little Jesuses. We're like little ambassadors for Christ. And when we listen to our Lord, when we take in that Word, and we hear of His love and His grace and His forgiveness, it empowers us to go and live as citizens and neighbors and spouses and children and friends in a God-pleasing way. All those things in their own way are high callings that we have as servants of the Lord. When we walk out those doors, the Word of the Lord might seem rare. But not in here. And we know that God continues to speak to us in many, many different ways. And when we hear the Word of the Lord, when we hear our shepherd's voice, what a privilege it is to be able to look at your Christian friend, to be able to look at your, your neighbor who maybe doesn't know and say, hey, listen. This is something that you need to hear. Amen. I sincerely pray that today's meditation on God's Word has enriched you. Didn't get enough of God's Word? Are you missing out on that in-person fellowship? We hold divine services right here in Bemidji, Minnesota at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School and Adult Bible Study is also offered between our Sunday services at 9.15 a.m. We also live stream our Sunday Divine Service at 8 a.m. You can ensure that you are notified when a stream is live or a new podcast is available by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's easy to find by typing in St. Mark Bemidji in the search bar and clicking on the subscribe button. Want to listen to meditations the way I do every day? Subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Go to podcastindex.org and search for St. Mark Bemidji to find us. This is our fifth year producing this podcast, and there is a large archive of devotional material online available if you want to learn more about God and His Word. Visit www.stmarksbemidji.org or look in the show notes in this podcast for a link to this and many other meditations on God. If you have any questions or you would like more information about our church and its ministry, please visit our website, which is once again www.stmarksbemidji.org. May God bless the rest of your day.